Hello everybody, welcome to the World Cup first round matchup between Shod and Seri Schmel. Now that's what I've been told, that that's what this Cyrillic writing um, is in English. I probably have no idea, how, well I have no idea how to pronounce it, so it's probably completely garbage, but you know, I do apologise. Uh, at least I've tried. Um, so Shod won the toss, chose to kick with Wood Elves. And uh, Shod has a 64% win rate in Champs Ladder. Well, let's say 65. Been rounding it up for everybody. 65% with Wood Elves. And he won Champs Ladder 14 on the PS4. A uh, little bit risky here, blocked by, uh, by Seri Schmel there, because if he'd got the power on the first block, he's got the uh, wolf stuck on the tree, which is scary, isn't it? Um, and Seri Schmel has a 60% win rate with Necromantic, but he's, he's uh, sorry, in Champs Ladder, but he's hardly played, he's only played a handful of games, so he can't read much into that. Um, he qualified from the Ruble, uh, like Russian Blood Bowl League, one of the three people, very competitive league, um, so you know, it, this is the thing, I, I do the Champs Ladder stats just as a bit of background, obviously it doesn't mean that the guy with a higher win rate is, you know, is, is better than the guy without a higher win rate. Um, but it gives you a frame of reference, doesn't it? That's why I've been doing it. You know, if you, if you know nothing about somebody, um, I think it's not as good as knowing something, no matter how unreliable the something is or meaningless. You know, it's, it's not meaningless. At the end of the day, somebody with a 80% win rate in Champs Ladder is probably better than someone with a 20% win rate. In between those extremes, it doesn't mean a whole lot, but it gives you an idea of, of something anyway. Some information is better than none, I think. So looking at the teams, I quite like the block show hands actually on the goal. I really do like that because Wood Elves are a terrifying matchup for everybody. I don't like chaining people away from the tree. I quite like that the tree was, was had all these men on it. But um, anyway, yeah, block show hands, great choice. I'm all for that. I quite like... Do you know what? Do you know why I, I, I don't hate having the one wolf instead of two wolves? Because I feel as rookie players, a ghoul is just better than a wolf. And I know this, this sounds stupid because a wolf is at 50k more. But even taking cost out of the equation, I think a movement 8 player, you know, with frenzy, without a blocking skill, is quite the liability. Now, of course, you, in this format, you do get to start them with the skills. So they're never a liability if, if you start them with block. Or wrestle, um, but yeah, I don't hate the start. He gets the third reroll. You really want three rerolls in this format because of overtime. So he gets the third reroll, and he's got a mobile guarder. The block flesh golem, not maybe he's not so good, but then you know he gets to block with him like this. He gets to hit the tree with him with block. So yeah, I quite like this build. The wrestle obviously is not so good with mighty blow. But with him only having one, oh my god, he got the three dice and then put it into a two dice. <laughs> and then had to use a reroll. Um, you know, because he's having to do both, isn't he? He's having to be the sweeper wolf and he's having to be the attrition blitzing wolf. So that that's the weakness of only having one wolf. I mean, I think I probably would have gone to because that's why you're playing Necro for the wolves, isn't it? But I can see why he did it. Um, the, the necromantic coach here, uh, Seri Schmel, really falling hard for the tree here, isn't he? Lots of players dedicated to punching it. Uh, it is good if you knock it over because you get to you get to run away from him, and particularly if you knock him over with mighty blow, then um, oh, double skull. He had some bad dice there, didn't he? Uh, two double skulls, but that was his choice to get the ex extra hit there. If he had just but then he didn't want to leave him in contact with the wolf, so yeah, you can't really can't really blame him for going for the three into the two to stop the wolf getting punched. You never want the wolf getting punched. Option of a one dice leap here, but you know that option is greatly, greatly, uh, shall we say, undesirable when you've got a block show hands carrier. You don't really want to. 3 plus into 5 plus the ball away. Um, you know, he's got the tackle. So yeah, so looking at uh, looking at Shod's team, I've heard good things about Shod from uh, PS4. PS4 coach, obviously haven't 
don't know the PS4 coach. I don't really know coaches that don't really play much in Champs Ladder or play on consoles. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know Cyrillic. Cyrillic man, Seri Schmel, I've never heard of him at all. Um, and I haven't heard of Shod personally because he plays on PS4. But he's got the wrestle and the wrestle, uh, wrestle the strip and the tackle and the leader, as you'd expect. He's got two rerolls instead of one, one reroll and an apple. He's got the tree. And he's gone dodge and leader. I quite like that, actually, because normally, in a normal NAF style thing, you go leader, tackle strip, and then a couple of dodge guys or something. And he's gone dodge, because he can stack, he's put it on the leader to protect the leader reroll. And again, the tree is hit and cast without my e blow or claw or anything. So, his pretty risky play of hitting the tree and tying up all of his players has paid off massively now because that is an actual real threat, you know, right? People say, ah, oh, you can just ignore the tree, stick a, stick a zombie on it. But then, he takes up a huge amount of space because he can move two squares, can't he? A, a tree man basically covers a 25 square 25 squares if he stood in the middle, you know, he can move two squares and then he can base the other people. So he's almost covering a 49 square. <laughs> 49 squares if he stands, you know, wherever he is. Because he can go two squares and then base somebody. So it really is huge to, to get rid of the tree if you can. Now I only really try to get rid of it with Claw or Claw Mighty Blow or Claw Mighty Blow piling on, on, other, on other teams. You don't really try to remove him. But if you can get a good knockdown chance, then um, even putting him on the ground, if he fails to stand up, you can just move away, can't you? Um, so yeah, the, he's only got one wolf, but he is getting hit. He is getting hit, but his arm is holding. But that is obviously a huge swing there. Huge swing of luck, getting the tree. Because the tree, and the tree protects your other players as well. It is really good, most of the time. Of course, sometimes it can, it can get rooted on turn one in a bad spot and be irrelevant, or it can, you know, it can roll a one in twenty-seven result and a three dice block and knock itself over. But I think it is a valuable, a valuable addition. I would, I think it's it's not so good in the mirror, but I I also think I would always have a tree on a on a NAF style um, wood elf team and on a on a on like a champs ladder progression league. Wood Elf team, I'll always have the tree as well. I think it is. I think it is overall very good. But punching it like that, you know, committing a lot of your players to punch it is very risky because, you know, if he hadn't got the power there, he suddenly got four guys stuck on the tree and it's near the ball and it's bad times. So, really, really lucky to remove it. Especially as it wasn't with a Mighty Blow Wolf. I could understand hitting with a Mighty Blow Wolf. You know, a lot more <laughs> risky, but there's a good payoff. So he got away. He got away with sticking his whole team on the tree, and is now rewarded for it. Yeah, the the the, the block, sure hands me make, making the uh, leap in not really probably ever a consideration for shot here. He's just having a screen, play a conventional defense of uh, dodging away a bit and screening a bit. You know, don't have to do the uh, the the old the elf screen of uh, you know two and then two squares and another two. You can do any kind of formation like this. It does it does the same thing, doesn't it? Of just getting bodies in the way, dual you know multiple screens. He has he has based this guy. I think maybe having him here might have been better, so it'd be harder to. Uh, to trap his player. Oh, a death. Not bad. Mighty blow. Making the injury. Making making it an injury from a KO and also getting another player. So now that he's got the 13 players, he can foul a bit, can't he? Which, which is good for him. Maybe save those fouls for the dancers or the catchers. Of a leader, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't foul a stun player, but and he hasn't got that many turns left, so maybe you could stun. Maybe fouling the stun guy here is, is actually all right. Um, I haven't, I didn't get to cast this game live. There were 
one of the few games that I didn't. Um, so I, I don't know what happens here, but he might go for the foul. Yeah, he does. And I don't hate it so much because you do have the chance to, you know, it's Wood Elves. So I'll excuse anybody fouling Wood Elves because, you know, it's it, <laughs> they are such a terror. And they're armor seven, so, you know, you can kind of snowball it if you get removals on the fouls. And with him having the reserve, you know, I say never, never foul a stun player, and only foul if you're happy with getting sent off for a stun. But there, there were certainly good arguments for making it. He didn't really lose a whole lot, and he doesn't have that many turns to foul a high value player. And with be with with the tree being gone, and. Uh, and it being game one, there's no mighty blow to worry about on the Wood Elves. So this was a bit of a commitment there, wasn't it, with this this blitz here? He's left. He's got a bit of a screen here, obviously wary of frenzy, but he has left him a good spot in the middle to go to if he wants. He could also he could blitz here and then also base all of these players. Looks like he's blitzing with a wolf though, doesn't it, from these guys? He's, he's not going back to the middle. I think I would have gone back to the middle just for more options. If you're on if you're on the sideline, then um, then it's a bit trickier, isn't it? Because you if you stood in the middle, you can go either way to score. And if you stood at the side, you can only go limited ways and out way out either way to score. So I like to stay in the middle if I can, just to make it harder for the defence to cover. But with him having a frenzy player, it makes it a lot harder to cover the sidelines. So I, un I understand going down the side. Now he's got the foul on the dancer. Happy days for him after that one in 36. <laughs> he doesn't get anything. He hasn't had a lot of luck this game, Shot, I don't think. <laughs> Kaz Tree. Well, the, the, the death meaning he, could, meaning he gets fouled. Um... And while he hasn't really done anything wrong, he also hasn't really had the chance to do anything right, has he? Um, yeah, it is what it is. Pretty, pretty weird. If he could, he could have, he could have, if he could have taken advantage of the four players on the tree, maybe, maybe that's on him. Maybe he should have taken advantage of it in the two turns that they were stuck on the tree. Um, but again, blocks your hands, ghoul. Very tasty against Wood Elves shows up the match immeasurably. I mean, it's already a close win rate between Undead and Wood Elves on tabletop, like NAF style tabletop. It's already close between them. And then when you when you add block show hands, because you can never do that normally, never being able to stack. And being able to stack the block show hands definitely shows it up for the uh, Undead. Necro. It's Necro. Ignore that. It's not close between Necro and... It's not close between Necro and Wood Elves. <laughs> Wood Elves have a big advantage over Necro. <laughs> but that, that serves my point even more. It's even even stronger then to have block your hands. <laughs> Excuse me for that slight... You see, this is... I'm getting confused and I'm not even playing, so, you know... I'm really not not criticising the coaches when I call out maybe something that's a little bit suboptimal or what have you. And here he saved his leap play to the last possible second because it is unlikely to work. And it doesn't work. But still, the point remains that normally normally you've got to cho choose between block and shoe hands for your ball carrier. Um, on a necro team or on a or an undead team, it's the same same thing. You've got to choose between one or the other, and the fact you get both, you know, it's pretty good, isn't it? If you were sure hands, you would have gone with a with a with the tackle dancer and would have got the both down and got the ball off him. And if he'd gone block, he would have gone with a strip baller. But the fact that he gets both, it's something I would have considered on on undead. That's why I was thinking undead. He could have gone for a surf here on the dancer, couldn't he? Um, you know, brought this guy in, blitzed there, pushed him to here, blocked him, 
served him with a wolf, but I think three dice with mighty blow is probably better, it's safer, and it gets him out of the way to score. So he he could have gone for the surf though. I think I think some people would have gone for the surf. It wasn't it wasn't too hard to get. Just rolling the dice, isn't it? That's the thing. It's a, the hardest thing about surfing is just rolling the pushes. Imaginatively named ghoul there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, one nil. One nil turn eight score, exactly as you want. And of course, the one turn isn't so good against two stand firm. So that is definitely something that Necro bring to the table in NAF style. You know, it's all, it's all about the one turn attempts. For Wood Elves, they can basically, they can completely, completely fail on defense and still have a chance to win the game, just thanks to the one turn. Um, I quite like this defense, having the guard, the guard there, because obviously you could try to power one of these ghouls and then come in here, but it's looking like a leap in, because he's got that guy there as well, so he can't just dodge in. You can't just power him and then dodge him. Not that he could power him anyway. <laughs> so you're looking at a leap for an uphill push to start it off. A leap uphill push is not a good way to start a one turn. But it's looking like how he's got to start it. But you know, if he, if he does that, he gets the push and then another one to get two forward. And then you can probably get another one to get three forward here. Not too difficult. That doesn't actually hurt him on, on getting the two pushes. He's better off doing the pass now while he's, well, he's only in one tackle zone. Um, also, it means that his dancer can't die from the blitz, from, from a failed leap. Um, it doesn't even re roll that to try and get the push. Interesting. I guess he didn't want to get the skull and get his dancer killed. That seems fair. Because, you know, armor 7, every time, every time a war dancer gets knocked over, it's squeaky bum time for elves. What else? So, yeah, nine players. Losing the trees big. For sure. Um, as, as inept as it has been on, in a lot of games. But, you know, nine players, they're all elves. You'd rather, if, you, if you're down to fewer, to fewer players, you'd kind of rather have people who can run around and do stuff than a big old tree that does nothing, so... It's not that bad to have nine players on offense here. But of course he's going to try and... Well, I imagine he's going to try to stall that out for overtime. The, the sack isn't looking as an attractive an option when he's got a block short hands. I imagine we'll see an effort to stall here for overtime. But with just the flexibility of being elves, so that if if it looks like you can't stall, you can still score and maybe turn them over. Have a much better chance of turning them over than any, than any other race would have anyway. No. He keeps the double skull. And he's probably thinking, could I have made any safe moves? Not really. That seems quite alright, doesn't it? He does get the chance to get the wolf in the backfield if he wants. But I quite like that double skull. Unlike Chabksu's double skull that he didn't re-roll, here the ball is far away from the line. Even if he knocks someone over and runs someone through, you know, they're not going to get that close to it. But he really should have thought before blocking whether he can re-roll it or not. You know, that's the thing. With his 15 second chunk um, to make the crucial decision of whether to reroll, you really have to decide whether you're going to reroll before blocking, um, which is a shame. I, I would much rather <laughs> not have to think about every block. What happens if I roll a 1 in 9 or 1 in 36 before I make it? You know, I, with, with my 3 minute turns, I'd much rather be able to uh, block and then think should I reroll it? it fails. Of course you should think about it positionally, you know. 
that should always be on your mind positionally. Would be, you know, what happens if I roll one of thirty six before you make the dodge, before you make the block. But there's some times where here, you're like, okay, it's safe. I can make the block, and accept the one in thirty six. But there are times when the ball's safe, and you just you should just be able to make the block, and then cross that bridge when you come to it, and you just you just can't in in Blood Bowl two. But you know that's okay. It's 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 one of the things about being good at Blood Bowl two, I guess, um, rather than being good at Blood Bowl. Not necessarily the same thing, you know. Never misclicking makes you better at Blood Bowl 2, doesn't it? Um, misclicks are something that never happens in tabletop. So, somebody could make a good Blood Bowl move, but a bad Blood Bowl 2 move. <laughs> I don't think you'll be too concerned about an early score from the Elves. So you'll just want to bring somebody back, which is exactly what he's done, so that he can't stall it if he gets the ball to him. And then maybe... With somebody else. Well, I just realised this surf was on, but he didn't get that. <laughs> um, that was a very risky spot, wasn't it? There, I mean, he just needed the push, and maybe he should have made it three dice. I mean, definitely should have made it three dice. That's a bit. I think that's a bit sloppy there. I think he should have absolutely made it three dice to get the surf. He is going to go for the uh, catcher there. But he was re <laughs> he was rewarded for not making it three dice by getting the cast. Yeah, this is the thing now he's got a two plus away, whereas when he had him in front, he didn't have the two plus to score. So I think maybe blitzing somebody here or the or the dancer and getting some pressure on the front is maybe the route I would have taken. But now he's now he's done the GFI to stop the two plus away. You know, again, that doesn't mean that what he did was wrong at all, is it? it? There's pros and cons to every move, so... You know. It looks like he's going for the quick score here, isn't it? Maybe... Desperation? I don't think he had to. But the, um... The fleshies are a pain. Pain for elves, absolutely. Looks like he's going for, for a pass. Makes the 75% catch. And yeah, can't stall because he's got all this stuff back, so. Risky play from Shod. He's Inarian did. He scored in two on offense. Out of three. But will he pay the price? Because now he's got to turn over to win. I think maybe he could have stalled it a bit more. Maybe he shouldn't have given up that serve. On the catcher. But it wasn't a surf in the end, it was just a lucky block, but getting him cast is he can't be really surprised with losing him because he, he you know he left he left him to get surfed. It was just chance that that he made a two dice block and didn't get a push. I'm sure if he'd got the push he would no, maybe not. Maybe not, because he didn't um he blitz the catcher, didn't he? Maybe he would have gone for the surf though if he'd got the push. Yeah, not not a nice spot to be in for the Woodies, is it? Eight players. And having to sack a player with blocks your hands almost certainly won't be able to get two dice on him. Stalling him out gets him to overtime. And then if he wins the toss, he's got he's got a decent chance. Maybe that's his plan. But realistically. It's not looking good for him to stop the score with only eight players, so he's probably going to have to go, you know, balls to the wall, as it were, and try to get a turnover here. Which means, of course, that the Necro should be very, very safe and not let him do that. But also, they've pretty much got the score, because if it goes to overtime, you can lose the toss to an eight-man elf team and you can just score on you. Nobody wants the 50-50 to lose the game, do they? Nice cars. It was, a, was not a frenzy trap, so that's good. There's been a lot of frenzy traps even in the World Cup.
The, the best chance probably here for the Wood Elves is going to be on turn one, isn't it? When he hasn't got a full cage. You know, there are six players here. So if you can intersect the team, you can you can get quite a lot of pressure on. You might be able to get a two dice. I mean, you can just make a two dice straight up here unless he GFIs. He does do the GFI, so there's there's no chance of a two dice on the ball, but this is a very good opportunity to blitz, tackle blitz a ghoul, base the ball, and uh, and yeah, put a screen in between. Ooh, I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure I like giving him the block out. I think I would have put the tackler here so that he would have had the blitz in. Oh, and he double ones the dodge. Well, that's unlucky, isn't it? I mean, that really is unlucky because that was a pretty nice spot for him to get, you know, four players in some kind of formation to, to cut off the support. Um, and I, I really don't like this giving him the block. I mean... <laughs> That's just giving him the surf, isn't it? That was, I think that was actually very poor by uh, Shod. I don't know what his thinking was there, really. You've got to, you've got to tag him in there. You? But, you know, his, uh, maybe he saw something I didn't. Or maybe he just blew it with three minute turns and pressure. Why only pushes him to here? Why? Is he going to put the ball back there? What a push. You push him to here and surf him, don't you? Pretty weird play by both parties here. Blitzing a random catcher. Wow. Wow. What a, what a missed opportunity there. I mean, the tackle dance is more dangerous for you than the strip dancer because you've got, you've got box your hands. So, yeah, I think I would have 100% gone for that surf. But again, it's heat of the moment, isn't it? And, and you do get tunnel vision when you're playing yourself. Um, it's a lot easier to spot things when you're just watching other people play than when you're playing yourself. But that looks like a huge mistake, a blunder from from Shod and then a blunder from Seri Schmel. Um he should never have let him get surfed, and he should have absolutely surfed him. I think. I know he's. I know it would have taken this ghoul away from uh, this white away from the action, but you know, it takes it takes the, the it takes the war dancer a lot further away from the action <laughs> off the pitch, and uh, he would have still been able to move up here just with one less player in the in the in the cage. I think that really was, yeah, not good. But, you know, uncharacteristic mistakes. I'm not slating them. I'm not slating them at all. But yeah. So he's gone for another three dice and a two dice by the look of it. I don't hear he's basing up the the dancer now as well. Normally you don't want to leave your, your wolf in contact with somebody. But, it's not so bad, is it, when, um, oh, he's going to do it the other way, okay, fair enough. I thought it would just hit the, the kind of obvious way, so there you go, you know, that's me getting a bit of uh, tunnel vision and just thinking what I think, thinking what I'm thinking. I think I would have maybe based the, uh, based the dancer there. Or, alternatively, with, with, the, with the flesh golem, or alternatively put the ghoul in here. So he could have only uphill blocked you instead of one dice blocking you. He might go for the blitz now, mightn't he? No, he's not. He's trying to screen. Hmm. I think maybe he's, uh, but the uphill's really low, low odds, isn't it? One in nine to get the to get the ball on the uphill. But still, maybe he thinks he can stop him, but. It seems hard with a with the dice he's rolling as well. He's making some dodge fails here, isn't he? And you know you can't 
<laughs> it's hard to win when you fail this many dodges. There was a, quite a few dodges that, on the split turn. That turn, there's a few one in thirty six dodges that he's rolled. Oh, I know that was a one in nine, but it, it was a double one. It, it if it had been a two one or a two two, it would have failed. But, oh, KO. He could have been without without dancers completely here. So had that surf happened. That was really, really strange, wasn't it? That? I quite like blocking off these two spots now so that the, you can only uphill you. I think that's a good play. Surely he will do that. Yeah. Could even fill up the squares completely so he just can't be hit. <laughs> that's that's what I did against Russ um, years ago. Now, I, I literally years ago. Now, I made a nine-man cage, and everyone had a good laugh about it. But you know, it makes you it makes you immune from strip, doesn't it? You know, th this cage could still get uphill by, uh, and it's not even hard to uphill it. It's just a three plus to leap in, and and then an uphill block. You know, if he if he had if he had not made that foul. And move the ghoul in. He wouldn't have even had this chance. And he got halfway there as well. He got he got the pow pow skull. If that being a double power, you know, maybe he gets to overtime. And he's got seven players. If he wins the toss, what else can still do you? <laughs> so yeah, I think I think the nine man cage would have been would have been a pretty good tactic there. And again, if you can reach with the uh, the, the zombies, which is not a given. Yeah, he could do, couldn't he? he? Could. He could definitely make it. Yeah. Make it so it's only an uphill, but he can't reach to completely nine-man cage. But now, now the assist on the two assist foul on the some. Oh, I wouldn't have kept him there. I would have got an extra assist in. And had he got the extra assist, he would have broken armor. But, you know, this guy's got dodge, he's not doing a whole lot. They're not doing anything really, the only guy who's doing anything is the dancer, so I think the extra assist on him would have been worth it. Makes the leap again, fails the GFI to hit. Oh well. Well, congrats to Seri Schmel. He certainly, you know, he played it fine. Um, you know, almost perfectly, I guess you can say. I think he probably... Oh, that was, he, he did get stuck on the tree, which maybe Shod could have exploited him for. Yeah, he did get stuck on the tree. He went a bit high risk on the tree. And then also, I think he, you know, I think Shod should never have given up that surf. And Seri Schmel should have all, always taken the surf. I think that was a bit of a mistake from both parties, but really neither neither played badly. It was just one of those games where, you know, the dice were somewhat in favour of the necro, um, with the, with the Kaz and everything, and pretty much, you know, if if both players play well, it's going to come down to the roll of the dice, isn't it? And and I think he had the advantage there. So I do apologise for his name. You know, if if I'm if I'm absolutely butchering his name, I do apologise, but. I can't speak Cyrillic or Russian, <laughs> so you know it is what it is. Congrats to him, though. Well played, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.